Justice is again on trial because the trials are not happening. Government says it's all under control. But guess what? The backlog is going up. 56,000 cases. The magistrates court backlog, half a million cases. What kind of mess is our criminal justice system in? Can it even be fixed? Let's find out. It's law cracking time. So the news stories have been becoming more and more frequent over the last few months. The Crown Court backlog as a result of the COVID delays has been rocketing. Victims are left with no justice and accused people who have a right to be considered innocent until proven guilty wait a year or two to find out their fate. Some of them at the end of that ordeal will be shown to have been wrongly accused. How's this happened? Why has it happened? How can it be fixed? Well, the first obvious thing to accept, isn't it, is that the chaos caused by COVID, nobody really predicted how it would affect every aspect of our lives. Social distancing, of course, became necessary to prevent the spread of this deadly virus. That meant that shops, restaurants, all of these places needed to be adapted. Crown courts too. Problem with crown courts is these buildings are 100, 200 years old in many cases, and they simply weren't suitable. Think about how many people you need in one room at one time. You've got the judge, the jury, 13 people. You've got a court clerk, 14. You've got at least one barrister for each side. You've got the defendant or defendants. Let's say there's a couple. You're up to 18 members of the public, members of the press. All of a sudden, 20 to 25 people seems completely plausible in a criminal trial in one room. None of this, of course, is suitable for social distancing safely. In March, courts were closed. New criminal trials didn't take place. The whole system went into hibernation. And why is that? Well, there's basically a principle that the jurors should be in the same room as the place where the evidence is being heard so they can weigh it up. And also people can monitor the jury to make sure they're paying attention and not falling asleep. It has been known. Now, adjustments were made fairly quickly for hearings to take place on Zoom or Skype for business or whatever. But these were things like procedural hearings, entering your plea, these types of things. It's not about gauging whether somebody is telling the truth and judging them. It's about process the case up to that point where you have the trial, which is that process that really must be protected. Now those hearings last a few minutes. A trial on the other hand takes maybe a week, maybe eight weeks, and those trials could not take place. And so the backlog grew and it grew fast. But by May of last year, already new ways of having trials were being experimented with and tested. Two trials were brought back to the Old Bailey, which is the court in England that hears more serious trials than any other court in the country. Now, one of these cases was an international fraud case that I was involved in. No, no, not me, this guy. And another was the murder trial arising from the death of PC Harper. Now, the way in which those trials took place was across three rooms. One for the action where the jury would be able to view witnesses, the judge would be there, and one barrister for each side at any one time at most. A second court, which the jury would use as their deliberation room, fully socially distanced, a very large space, and a third court for overspill, the press, families, members of the public. Now that's three courtrooms to replace one courtroom and one small jury deliberation room. As a result, you have a serious capacity problem. So they were the test trials and they worked out okay. And there were a couple more that took place around the same time in Cardiff. But after that three or four month break, trials only started quite slowly. And since then, the system's ability to carry out these COVID safe, socially distanced trials hasn't really increased. In summer of last year, the head of the court service was saying, yes, we're going to need 200 Nightingale courts. There are currently eight that can deal with criminal cases. There are 77 permanent Crown Court centres in the country. Compare that with 100 or 200 Nightingale courts that the government themselves said were necessary. You can see that we are miles away from the fantastic ideal that enables the system to run properly.
But it is fair to say that throughout the country, people in the justice system have been doing their best. Courts, wherever possible, now have lots of screens. There is alcohol gel as far as the eye could see. But the unavoidable verdict is this is a situation that will only get worse. And this is how bad it's getting. The Ministry of Justice was saying that when barristers were saying that they were being told their trial was two years away, that this was an urban myth and it wasn't really happening. The Ministry of Justice are not saying that anymore. If you're not on remand, in custody, in prison, and therefore prioritised, 18 months, two years on big cases is now the norm. This problem has developed to an unacceptable tolerance level. So what about Labour's idea of a seven-person jury as a temporary measure so that these trials can go ahead like we had during the Second World War? Well, first of all, there's no indication really that that would be enough. Five people out of that list of 25 or 30 people in a criminal trial probably won't make that much of a difference. Even if they could go down from using three big courtrooms for one trial to two, that's still more than we have capacity for across the country. Lawyers have also said they are very concerned about anything that creeps away from our thousand year commitment as a nation to the principle of a 12 member jury. Irrespective of all of that, the government say they simply won't do it. But and here is the crazy and almost unbelievable part of this whole mess. Every single one of these figures that the press have been talking about conceals a bigger hidden scandal that has been building for years. The justice system was already running with huge delays before COVID even struck. The Crown Court backlog, 56,000 remember now, was already 40,000 in March 2020 when courts were suspended. Many, many more cases were being delayed in the investigation stage before the case even became a court case because of police and CPS delays. Here's exactly what's been happening and how that problem's been getting worse over the last 10 years or so. Police underfunding had led to a growing backlog of cases at the investigation stage and it had got steadily worse and worse since the austerity cuts of 20%. Now that backlog led to growing investigation lead times. And instead of investigating and charging suspects quickly, the police began to just keep tabs on them using bail conditions. Basically the police telling you you're legal obliged to either stay at the same address every night or report to a police station perhaps three times a week or not speak to a certain person who's a witness or a complainant in the case. But those waits to get to the end of the investigation got longer and longer and the police were so swamped they couldn't even do interviews with the suspects straight away. They'd just bring them back later and later and maybe re-interview them and re-interview them down the line. But unless you've got new evidence, the law doesn't allow you to do this. And the principle was tested in a case called Hookway. A magistrate's court police bail extension case went to the High Court where Greater Manchester Police lost. The case then went to the Supreme Court, but before it got there, Parliament brought in emergency legislation so that police could bail and rebel with no time limits, even when they had no new evidence. Now the lawyer acting for Mr. Hookway, this man, who is not law cracker, but is a very handsome fellow, was very angry and he and 20 other lawyers launched a campaign to stop this emergency legislation going through. Now the law was still changed, but the government made a concession, a review into bail law, limiting bail to three months unless the police could justify extending the period. But the police couldn't investigate within three months or six months or finish the investigation, even in some cases within 12 months. Why? Because they were still operating at a 20% budget cut and they were powerless to act within these new rules. So what did they do? Well, in most cases, they abandoned bail conditions altogether. Instead, they released them under investigation, or RUI. RUI is the police's way of saying, we suspect you, we're keeping an eye on you, and we'll let you know in two or three years. In fact, now there is no time limit at all. And in many cases, it's taking three or four years from the event for the case to even reach court for the first appearance. So two years after that for a trial during this COVID crisis, and you're talking about five or six years. Six years ago, I looked like this.
It's this hidden scandal combined with the COVID situation that pretty much only the Guardian newspaper seems to have picked up on in the last few weeks. An innocent person can have a criminal case hanging over them now for five or six years. Three years would be a scandal. And for most serious cases, that is now the minimum. Victim of crime doesn't know the outcome. The wrongfully accused don't get to clear their name. And this crisis has placed police forces under massive pressure. In some forces, they've even been accused of not recording crimes as a way of reducing their own internal backlog. Greater Manchester Police has gone into special measures. And it's not just the police who are accused of hiding cases. The CPS was already an organization at the limit of its resources. And by the time the Me Too movement got into its full flow, the number of rape allegations skyrocketed, the number of CPS prosecutions for rape trials in the Crown Court was bigger than every other category of case put together. That was clearly an organisation then at breaking point and the CPS is now being sued in the High Court for allegedly secretly changing its charging policy to bring fewer rape cases to court. COVID didn't cause this crisis. Disgraceful underfunding of the police and CPS. Criminal neglect of the justice system. These things have made the justice system an easy victim to the ravages of COVID and exposed the scandal of what was already going on. The only thing that can deal with these problems effectively is a complete attitude change to how the justice system is approached by government as a whole. This is a problem that will not go away otherwise. Seven person juries, Zoom trials, all that stuff. These are ideas that sound interesting, but they're just window dressing and they have zero chance of bringing our justice system back. This was the Law Cracker. Tell me what you think. Like, share, sub subscribe. There is a, a subscribe and a bell. Apparently the bell is important. Not sure why. If you're a lawyer, what do you think? Am I right? Tell me what you think. Give me some really good feedback in the comments. Give me bad feedback if it was bad. But if it was bad, why are you watching? Hey, it's the end of the video. Check out my other videos on COVID, vaccines, the Illuminati, blah, 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 Trump, QAnon, and uh, the Holy Way. Thank you very much. Good night. Yeah.